everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Natalia Lee and I'm an indie author and freelance editor and today I am going to show you how to format your novel using Microsoft Word. Now I did put up a poll on my little community center and I got about 450 votes and the majority of people wanted a formatting video. So if you want to be able to vote on what my next video is going to be and participate in polls, make sure you are subscribing to my channel. You can hit the button right down there to subscribe and then turn on the little bell notification if you want to be notified every time a video goes live. So we are going to head on over to my screen capture and I will show you how to format your novel in Microsoft Word. It will be basic, but it'll be beautiful. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, friends, so this is the basic formatting that I'm going to be covering today. I'm going to show you how to set your page size, your margins, basic line spacing, because people mess up their line spacing all the time in self-published books. It's absolutely crazy. Um, indentation, chapter styles, and then page numbers and headers are slightly more advanced. So I will show you a very basic tutorial on these. But in order to really learn how to do page numbers and headers, you're going to have to practice this because it is, it is a pain in the butt on Microsoft Word, but I will give you kind of a basic uh, page number and header tutorial. So I'm going to click on over here. Now this is, <laughs> some of you will um, have heard of Fire Tongue. Fire Tongue is a novel I wrote um, after Highborn, but before Way of Spears. So it was the third novel that I wrote. I never did anything with it, but I would still in the future like to rewrite this book and publish it. I'd like to turn it into an entire series. So what I did was I actually took chapter one straight from Scrivener, because that's the program I used to um, write this novel. So I took chapter one, I just dropped it right into Microsoft Word, and it has no formatting. The first thing we're going to cover today is page size. Now, you're not going to know what page size to set your manuscript on until you know what your trim size is going to be. So we're going to hop on over here. This is KDP. They have some wonderful information regarding kind of how to set up your book, um, you know, formatting and stuff like that. So I will say that you can set up so many different trim sizes, but there are three that I recommend. So the first is the five by eight which is gonna be more of like a typical smaller paperback. We have a five and a half by eight and a half, which is also a good size for a paperback. And then we have a six by nine, which I would say is probably one of the most popular uh, trim sizes. I see a lot of books in six by nine, but personally I would only use six by nine for a hardcover and then five by eight for a paperback. So let's just say that for now, we're going to be formatting Fire Tongue like a paperback. So I need a trim size of five by eight. So I'm gonna head on over here. We are going to go up to layout and then I'm gonna to go to size and this is under page setup. And you can see that it's set at letter, which is 8.5 by 11. That's like standard computer paper and that is not what I want. So I'm gonna to go to more paper sizes and I'm actually gonna set it myself. I want it to be five inches wide and eight inches tall. There you go. And also one other thing, I'm actually, I just remembered, I'm gonna come back over here. We're gonna add um, page facing is something we're going to chat about as well. All right, so simple as that. You can see how different my novel looks already at being a five by eight. This was the 8.5 by 11. It was seven pages and then I'm gonna hop on back. Now it is 18 pages at five by eight. So you can start getting a more realistic feel for the page count of your novel once you have it set to the correct page size. Now the next thing we're going to do is head up here to the margins and margins, oh my gosh, you're gonna have to play with these a little bit because it's never perfect. And again, I'm gonna head over here to KDP where it will give you some tips for setting your own margins. So I always go off of this, um, you know, like what KDP kind of recommends. And I'm gonna show you how to do this, but I'm also going to mention that setting your margins 
in accordance to kind of KDP's guide is not always perfect. So often what you'll have to do is set it according to their guidelines, order yourself a proof copy, and then look at the margins and see if you're happy with them. I tend to have a larger margin because you don't want your words running into the gutter and becoming difficult to read. So definitely a larger inside margin and then the outside margin is gonna be smaller and it's gonna be dependent on whether you're doing bleed or no bleed, but that is going to be um, a different tutorial. We're not really gonna talk about that today. Generally, if you are not using images, you're just gonna go no bleed because bleed is for image settings. So we're going to go with the smallest page count for now. So my inside margin should be 0.375 and my outside margin is going to be 0.25 and you can see that the outside margin is the same no matter your page length, that doesn't matter. Now, the inside margin is going to change depending on how long your book is because the thicker that book is and the more pages have to kind of bind at the spine, that's going to impact how much room you need to give your um, text in the gutter. All right, so 0.375 and 0.25. Okay, so I'm going to head up here to margins and while we're at it, we are going to change our pages. So under margins, we have pages, multiple pages. We need to make sure that we have facing pages, which means that, you know, you open a book, you have a left page and a right page, and those are going to have slightly different formatting. So we're going to select mirror margins from this dropdown. And now you can see in the preview that the inside on the left page is here on the right and then vice versa on the right facing page you have the inside margin on the left whereas if you left it at normal you would have the same on either side so we need to make sure that we have mirror margins and then up here you will see that this shifts to inside and outside instead of left and right so make sure that you have mirror margins selected now for inside we want 0.375 and for outside, we want 0.25. And then I'm going to apply this to the entire document and say OK. And immediately you can see how, look, it had 18 pages, now it has 13 because I have fixed my margins. Now, see how close these words are to the outside because this is going to look a little bit tricky. This left facing page, it looks like it'll be a left page, but it's actually going to be a right facing page because when you open up a book, the first page is on the right hand side. So you can see that there is a larger margin here on the left side. So this is your inside, this is your outside. So I already know that I feel like I want a slightly larger outside margin. I'm gonna head back up here, custom margins, and I'm gonna make this point to eight maybe. All right, so that gave me a little bit more space. I want a little bit more. I'm gonna go up to 0.3. All right, so that is looking a little bit better. And again, this is something that you can kind of play with on your own, depending on how you want your novel to look. We're gonna head back over here. So I showed you the page size. I showed you margins. And I also showed you page facing, and that was mirror margins in case you forgot. So we did that as well. Now we are going to move on to line spacing. And let me tell you what, this is one of those things that people mess up all the time. And if you mess up your line spacing, it's going to be incredibly obvious to your reader that you don't know what you're doing and you do not want them feeling that way. You want your reader to pick up your book and see it perfectly formatted so that they have confidence in you as a creator and as a writer. So I'm going to use control A and I'm going to select this whole novel and I'm going to come up here to this little paragraph drop down and you can see we have line spacing here. So if you do single line spacing, that's what it's going to look like. So that is at 14 pages, but personally, um, single line spacing, I think is a little bit difficult to read. So instead of that, I'm gonna show you 1.5. But now, and this is what many indie authors will do, they will set it at 1.5 because they want a little bit of space. 
so that their readers can read it easily. However, this is way too much space, okay? Your reader doesn't need one and a half line spacing. So single line spacing might not give people enough space and 1.5 is too much. So I'm gonna come back up here. We're gonna say exactly, maybe let's do 15. Ah, now that looks quite nice. So this is, of course, more than single, but it is less than 1.5. And you can see I'm now sitting comfortably at 15 pages instead of the 18 that the 1.5 was giving me. So I'm pretty comfortable with this. Now, you will notice that there are additional spaces here between paragraphs, which doesn't look very nice. So in order to fix that, you'll see if I select this area between the two paragraphs and come up here, that there is 12 points before and after the that paragraph so I'm gonna make that zero and then boom it fixes that problem so let's select all of this so we're gonna select everything and we're gonna make both of these zero because we do not want additional line spacing between paragraphs of the same style see this don't add space between paragraphs of the same style so we're gonna have zero zero and that's gonna be selected and now this dropped me down to 11 pages because look, I removed all of that additional line spacing. And you also will see um, these random little spaces here and these are scene breaks. So I'm gonna put three pound signs or hashtags, whatever you wanna call them um, on my scene breaks. And if you for any reason decide not to format for yourself, or even if you are formatting for yourself, when you are writing, if you do these three um, hashtags or pound signs or you know some people will do the three asterisks this will tell your formatter or you where they need to insert the correct uh, scene break character or image or whatever you're using so that's why when I'm seeing these extra spaces like this I'm adding these three uh, pound signs because I want to make sure that I'm putting my correct uh, scene breaks there all right we're gonna go back up here so I just showed you line spacing. Now, indentation is next, and this is a big one. Again, I see people mess this up all the time, so let me tell you once and for all, do not hit the tab, because now you have one single paragraph indented and none of the other ones are, and you're gonna have to go through here and hit tab every single time. And something else I see people doing, um, here we go, let's go back. Something else I see people doing is one, two, three, four, five, and trying to space it out with the space bar. And you can see those five spaces that they added there. So do not use the tab, do not use the space bar. I wanna select everything, control A, come up here to paragraph, and we're going to go to indentation, first line only. And if you do it by 0.5, here's what it looks like. And that's not terrible, but I, personally think that 0.5 is way too much. So instead of 0.5, we're going to go to, how about 0.3? Ah, that looks so much better. So now we have this nice indentation so people's eyes can track these paragraphs nicely, but the indentation isn't so far in that it looks amateur. Because again, if you are formatting your own novel, you do not want to look like an amateur who has no idea what they're doing. So that is how you do your indentation. And I will also mention that after a chapter heading, which we're going to do next, or after a scene break, your first paragraph does not need indentation. So take that away. The indentation in kind of typesetting like this is to help your readers track different paragraphs. That's the entire purpose is just to make it easier on their eyes to be able to track. But when you have a chapter heading or a scene break, they already know where the next uh, paragraph begins because that scene break or that chapter heading has kind of broken up the monotony of all the paragraphs and all the text. So that's why you do not need one right after a chapter heading or a scene break. So just keep that in mind. That's why I removed it there. So now we're gonna head back over here. I showed you indentation. Next up, chapter styles. So we are going to bump this down and I'm gonna say chapter one. 
Now, a really simple way to make sure that all of your chapter headings are exactly the same is to use this styles function. All right, so what I'm going to do before I come up here to styles is I'm actually going to select chapter one and then come up here to styles. And I'm selecting chapter one because that is what I want to be stylized. And I'm going to come down to this button that says new style and I'm gonna name it chapter one or chapter one, uh, chapter style uh, demo. And let's say I want it to be Times New Roman, maybe 22 point font underlined. Um, let's center it and let's also click this button here to give it a little bit of space. I wanna space it out a little bit and you can see I can really space it out or I can make that a bit smaller. So I'm gonna space it out maybe like that and I'm gonna click okay. And immediately I have a nice chapter heading here and then I'm gonna close down this style. And then let's say, let's just pretend that this was another um, chapter, all I would do is select it and click chapter. And it immediately changes it to the style that I have set. So instead of setting it to a chapter style, let's create a scene break style. Come up here. This is gonna be scene break demo. I want it to be centered and I want it to be Let's say Times New Roman, um, 18 point font with a little bit of spacing. Boom. There is my style for my scene breaks. So then every time I spot a scene break, where is one? There's one. Every time I spot a scene break, I just highlight it and click scene break. And this will make it incredibly simple to make sure that all of your chapters have the exact same style, all of your scene breaks have the exact same style. So my recommendation is always to come up here and kind of create like a style for yourself. And then all you have to do is highlight the text and select the style you want. And it's that simple. So styling is incredibly easy. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that off. Now these next two, I will say can get very tricky. So we're going, I'm gonna show you just a very basic page numbers and headers tutorial, but if you wanna get really good at this, it's going to take some time. You're gonna really have to play around with it. So this is gonna be super basic. So let's start with page numbers. Now the easiest thing to do would be to come up here. I usually just type in page numbers to find it. And we're gonna say we want it, you know, bottom of page in the center. Boom, and now we suddenly have a page number down here. And I always make sure that this is turned down a little bit, header from top and then footer from bottom, because you don't want a ton of space here. I might even make it one. Okay, so that's the simplest way to do it. And if you don't want to mess around with um, section breaks, which is something that I, I don't know if I'm gonna do a whole tutorial on this because it can be very confusing, but if you do not wanna deal with section breaks, this is the easiest way to number your work. You can see it's already numbered, it's super simple. However, you might want, you know, chapters to not have a number here. So it would be no number, and then we would go to page two, three, four, and then maybe there's another chapter, so it would have no number, and then that would emit, that would be five, but you wouldn't see the number there, and then it would go to six. So if this sounds confusing, believe me, I understand. It took me a long time to learn this, so I am not going to go through all of the like backstory and the tutorial to show you how to do section breaks. Instead, I'm just gonna show you basically, here's how you do your page numbers. And now we're going to do um, a header. So you can come up here and you can type in header or you can double click up at the top. And let's see, this is fire tongue. But you don't want it to say fire tongue on every single page. So I'm gonna click this button that says different odd and even pages. So on the uh, odd pages, we're going to have fire tongue. And on the even pages, we're going to have Natalia Lee. But you'll see that when I did that, oops, look, suddenly our page numbers are messed up because I selected different odd and even pages. So you can already see how this can be incredibly frustrating because right now your header and footer are connected to each other. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna select this. 
we want this to be um, centered. There we go. We're going to center this. So you can play around with the font up here. Like you can, um, you know, change this just as you would anything else. But you have to remember if you have different odd and even pages, you have to change these all um, individually. Well, not all individually. Okay, so now we have the left and the right. All right, so you can see how that works, Fire Tongue Natalia Lee, but look, our page numbers are messed up. So all I had to do to fix that was go to the bottom of that page, come back up here and click bottom of page and then center it. So you can fix it and you can see it looks great now. We have Fire Tongue, Natalia Lee, and then appropriate page numbers. So it's that simple. However, of course, if you want to have the nice like professional formatting of not having a header or a footer on your chapter pages, then that is a totally different tutorial. I'd be happy to make that tutorial in the future. Um, you can also look up a few. I had to look up a bunch of tutorials, you know, in order to learn this. But just wanted to let you know, kind of show you the basics. You can simply type in either, you know, add a header or you can type in page numbers just like that, or just double click and that'll access the header and footer. It's that simple. So there you have it, my friends. There are your page numbers and your headers. Oopsie. Going to X those off. All right. So now one other thing I'm going to do just to help this book look nice is I do not like this Courier new um, font. This is not an appropriate font face at all. My favorite is, um, I do like Times New Roman, but my favorite is Garamond. So you can see that this looks a lot more appropriate. Now do keep in mind that I selected this and I changed it to Garamond. But if I was to click the uh, chapter style up here, you'll see it has corrected it to Times New Roman because that is how I styled my chapter headings. So now we have chapter one and then immediately it goes into the story. And this is very basic formatting, but it's beautiful formatting. This will get you so far, like just having your basic headers, your basic page numbers. I'll also mention you can change the format of the page numbers down here. I do not like the basic format they come in. So again, I might set it to Garamond because that's my favorite. And I might even shrink it down a little bit. Let's make it Okay, we're going to select that. We're going to change it to Garamond. There we go. And I'm also going to change up the sizing here. So you can make them ginormous. You don't want them ginormous. You can make them teeny tiny if you want. I'm going to make it like a 10 probably. And then also remember, you know, we set our odd number. We have to do the same down here for the even. So I'm going to set this to Garamond size 10 because you want to make sure they're even. I did not select it. Let's try that again. <laughs> We're going to set it to Garamond and size 10. And there you go. Close header and footer. You have a beautifully formatted novel now. And again, you know, if we have, let's say we put a scene break here, remove the indentation from that first paragraph. Get rid of that because you do not need it. Get rid of it. Just like that. So you can see here, no indentation on the first paragraph after a chapter heading and no indentation on the first paragraph after your scene break. So there you have it, my friends. That is a very basic setup on Microsoft Word and this will get you so far. This will really help you out. Okay, friends, thank you so much for watching. That was a super basic tutorial on how to format your novel in Word. However, even though it's basic, you can make your book look absolutely beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it or if you learned something new. Also, please keep in mind that Enchanted Ink Publishing is now offering professional formatting services. You can check out the website at enchantedinkpublishing.com or wait until the end of the video and click the link here to navigate there. So if you watch this video and you're kind of thinking, you know, I don't want to take the additional time to learn how to format my novel in Word, 
it's all good. You can contact us. Again, it's enchantedinkpublishing.com and we can get your novel looking absolutely beautiful and ready for publication. So thank you guys so much for watching today. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on that notification bell. I think I will be posting more polls so that you guys can let me know directly through a poll what videos you wanna see because I wanna make sure I'm putting out content that helps you and helps you get ahead in terms of your indie author business. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your time. I hope you are all staying healthy and staying well, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.